Queen's logic, first of all. Queen's logic. How, was... how high could she have gone in her three-year-old career oh. if she didn't get injured before the guineas? Hey, listen. <laughs> Jabber was a law unto himself. Now, what I'm trying to say is she had a bit of mucus on, on a scope. It was my fault. I should have run her in the guineas. She had a, she had a, a drop in the foot, a bit of pus in the foot, mm. which we cut out two days before the, uh, the 1,000 guineas. Well, I remember coming back from Newmarket because I've been at the sales to see it on the morning. And uh, um, on, the, on the, I think it was the Friday morning, and, and uh, the Saturday morning, I come straight back from Newmarket. I drove back about half past four in the morning because I've been up there on the Friday and the race was on the Sunday. And I, I remember coming back and, and she was very sore. She had this drop in her foot, a bit of pus. But she'd finished her work, she could have run. And I remember waiting and think, well, I'll have another look at her on Sunday morning. We took her out on the Sunday morning. And the reason I took her out was the biggest lesson and the biggest cock-up I've ever made in my life. Because I could have got I could have run her and she would have won and I would have got away with it. But I said, we got the Irish guineas in 28 days or something, you know, 26 days or something. We'll wait for that. We won't, you know, we won't take a chance. And I I remember, and I, whether it was the all, all this overseed rape and everything about, I don't know. But um, the, the, her last bit of work before the thing, she made a little bit of a noise. Anyway, we scoped her, and there was a load of mucus in her lungs. And I, Jack still puts it down to the to the rape, and that, and probably right because you know, the pollen and everything else. I don't know, but anyway, she had this mucus, and I remember. I ring in Bruce and tell him, look, I'm, I won't be able to run in the Irish Guineas because she's she's full of muck and there's no point in running her. And, and he, he phoned up, he said, okay. And he rang me back about a quarter of an hour later and he says, he's retired her. I said, what? Well, he's mad, mad as, a, mad as a fish. But, you know, I've had a million rows with, you know, people think me and, me and Jabber had so many differences. How we ever stuck together as long as we did, I'll never know. But uh, we were together a long time. We had a lot of very good horses. And, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is, uh, I remember him, the Umazane story was the thing, because I had a, a lovely man. We had, can I just say on Umazane, when we, uh, we asked for questions for, for Mick, <laughs> Umazane was, I think, the most popular response, naturally, I suppose. Mm -hmm. A horse like that gathered, he, he has so much popularity, almost dare I say it, because just as much of what he does achieve as to what he doesn't as well. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, you know, he's a professional loser, isn't he? <laughs> you know, he was, a, but a character, you know, what I'm trying to say is, you just don't get those, I mean, you get those horses, the more you're in the game, the more you, you get them type of horses. You get, you get horses at all sorts of level, but he was a horse at the highest level that was a real character, you know, that, once he hit the front, he stopped. Mm. Is that now him? I, that's him. Yeah. That's him. That's a picture of him as well. So that's what he really looks like. And he was he wasn't very big. He wouldn't, as I said, his work at home. You would, you say, ah, he's all right here. But he would just do enough, whether it be with a selling plate or with a good horse. But um, you know, I mean, but I, I remember I had a lovely owner called Graham Love, and he was a smashing bloke. But he was a jumps man. And he used to say to me every year, he said, you've got 30, 35 grand. Go out and buy me a, I want you to buy me a, a year, go and buy a yearling, but I want it to be able to jump. So I, you know, what I'm trying to say, I didn't buy just one of those that would jump and run and, you know. Uh, and every year we bought him one. Dane Gold was one of his horses. Um, anyway, I bought two by Sindar. Me and Jill Rich, and I could I can see me and her looking at them now in 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 the in the sales in the, where they walk in the, before they go into the ring, and I, we looked at Umazane, and there was another one, two Sindor horses, and we paid thirty two grand for both of them. And I remember that evening, and in the sales we used to be at the sales all day. We very often used to go to the fountain for for a, for a Chinese or something at the end of the day, and I remember going into the Chinese. There and I say, well, we got one for Graham, you know, you know, one of the Sindars. Anyway, funny enough, as I said that to her, the phone rang. I picked up the phone, Jabber here, 
He says, I'll have the one out of the Saddler's Wells mare. <laughs> Fuck. I said, fine, you have a great. So that was a great, great bit of business. You bought a horse and sold it. Yeah. And that was a human thing. But, and, but Graham Love had the other one. But originally, I, I, I wouldn't have bought that for Jabber. That, no. would, that was more angled towards Graham Love's horse. We'll have a whip round. Yeah. We'll give you 35 grand if you go and buy us a Yum's Aid, please. <laughs> That's <laughs> Racing right, one, TV. four and a quarter million. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah no. So it was a... This is a good one. Flashy wings. She could have won the guineas if it wasn't for an overnight deluge. Yes, I think you're right. Went real heavy. Flashy wings was, was a very, very good filly. Too many yeah. of these could have won the guineas, you know, isn't it? Well, that's right. You know, music show. Mm. She was she was very good. She was on the wrong side. They, that's when they had the they split into two groups, didn't they? You know, she won on her side. But that was but then at Newmarket, there was no need for it. You can bring, surely bring them together. That was one of my biggest criticisms of the. I always say the the Guineas is run two weeks too early. And always run on that stupid Rowley Ma where, you know, they can f get into two groups. Why on earth? You know. You've got to love the UK. We, we, we run our guineas. At Mad the, dogs uh, and Englishmen. We, we uh, run the guineas at the Rowley Ma and we run the Derby and the Oaks at Epsom. There you go. Um, well, that's right. I mean, Epsom, for Jesus Christ. We finish with... You run your best horses on the worst tracks. It's crazy. <laughs> we finish with a couple of people. That, we'll talk about a, a guineas winner in Samatar. Yes, she. <laughs> that was good. That was some some turn of foot she showed in the. Well, we bred her at Norman Berlin. Court, you know. Did you? Yeah, she was bred as well, and well, I mean, I, I bought her back at the sales. They thought I think they thought we were running it, you know, because I said, "Did you? We'll have it for forty grand." She bought it back for thirty nine, I think. Uh, but she was a very nice filly. She's a big price Did, on the day, wasn't she? She was, yeah. Jill bought the mare for six grand, the dam of Samatar. And I, I think I sold it, and then was, I got in trouble because I, I sold it for, for 10 grand to a good punter of mine, <laughs> Patrick Trant, you know? <laughs> so uh, I wasn't in Jill, Jill, Edley's, uh, Jill Richardson's good books over that. Uh, Mick, it's been an absolute, I feel like I could I'd carry on forever and ever, um, but it's been, it's been a pleasure and um, I look forward to seeing you on the race course again. No, no problem. You, you race course wise, you, you haven't been too much in the last <laughs> no, 12 well, months. I've got no need to go. I, I love the, this side of it more. And Jax can get around better than me. I mean, I've had, you know, leg problems and, you know, all little niggles from, uh, I don't think it's from football, but just through living, through right. life, <laughs> you might say. <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, uh, he can take care of that side of it. I enjoy this side of it. I enjoy the, you know, yeah, the social side of it to a point. As I say, um, we still get together, your Hannans and your Ellsworths and people like that. So, um, now we're all all right. Everybody's good. And I enjoy, and I enjoy it. I mean, I, I don't plan on giving up either just yet.